Wow, you guys sounded amazing. I got to hit record here because uh, Alex is uh, serving in the military. I told him I'd record it for him. He was, uh, he was a little, uh, he texted me like very apologetic. I was like, at ease, soldier. <laughs> Much love and respect. I got this for you. So, you know, with the Olympics uh, just finishing up and uh, the uh, NBA just finishing and seeing the championships and just seeing, uh, uh, you know, the uh, gold medals. And I was just thinking about this word victorious, as Bob mentioned. Um, you know, I was just invited to uh, be a part of the football fantasy league. Is that how you say it? But well, I've never done that before. And I thought, man. We can't be uh, having lives of fantasy. I mean, I think it's going to be fun, but we know we got to be real uh, about what we're doing. You guys can't hear me back there. I'll try to speak louder. Amen. So I was just thinking, you know, what if what if God came down and He said, you know what, Dave, I want you to uh, go back to your twenties. And I want you to try out for the Olympics, your favorite sport, whatever it is. And uh, I guarantee you, you'll be victorious. Imagine if he said that to you. Whatever it is, is it archery? Is it running? Is it swimming? Is it uh, uh, basketball? I'd love to be, you know, at the Olympics playing basketball. It'd be amazing. Um, but he guarantees you the victory that you will win. I think some of you are like, Nah, too much effort. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, God. But, thank you, God. But I, I'm good. I, I, that's too much stuff. But, you know, just to think about, man, you, you win the gold and, and you get to step up to that little top tier, right? And they give you the gold medal. And then the anthem is played, you know, and then the tears start to roll down. Like, you, you made it. You were victorious. You know, God wants us to be victorious spiritually and so uh i was looking up that word and uh it's in the new testament it's only in the book of revelation so go ahead and turn over to revelation chapter two jesus uses that word 10 times in the book of revelation victorious he wants us to be victorious and uh today he's going to be saying that to you i will give you victory uh, but you have to want it. Uh, you, you can't go, no, no, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm good. You, you have to want the victory. In uh, Revelation chapter 2, in verse 7, and in the middle there, it says, To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Paradise with victory. Chapter 2, verse 11, halfway through, says, The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. Wow, that's awesome. In verse 17, halfway through there, it says, to the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I don't know what that means, but it sounds awesome. <laughs> verse 26, to the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. Wow over the nations chapter 3 verse 5 the one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white i will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels wow. that's amazing because you know sometimes you feel like i shouldn't go to heaven i've been uh i haven't been the greatest guy but jesus like no no, no. when you're victorious i got you I'm going to vouch for you up in heaven. In uh, verse 12, it says, The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. To uh, be a pillar, that means uh, people look up to you. They see you as someone that uh, they can trust, that they get advice from you. Uh, when you're victorious, that's the kind of life that you can have. That you can be influential and help people. As a matter of fact, you'll be victorious over nations. Um, that's what he says. And so here he speaks to the seven churches. 
And a seven biblically just means complete. And so he wants us to be completely victorious. And each one of these churches he's concerned about. And, uh, you know, uh, what applies back then applies now. He doesn't care what car you drive or what phone you have. Uh, what he cares about is your heart. And 2,000 years ago, people wanted love and respect, and that's what people want now. Yeah. 2,000 years ago, people lied and stole and cheated, and they do that now, right? And so it's all about the heart. It's about the mind. It's about what we focus on. And so I have seven victorious charges for you, uh, each taken from these churches. So the first church uh, is in Ephesus, Revelation chapter 2. Read with me, starting in verse 3. It says, you have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. And so here is a church that is uh, not grown weary. It's, it's uh, cranking, but it forgot how to love God. And, you know, uh, several years ago, uh, Jill and I we were having problems in our marriage. It's true. <laughs> so we were like, no way. Yes. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Luke, my best friend, said, you, you got to go back to your first love. Remember what you did when you first started dating, how you'd get her flowers and how you'd write her cards and you'd write her poems and you'd hold the door open for her. Like, when's the last time you did that? I was like, oh my gosh, I have forsaken my first love with my wife. And uh, it was awesome. It was great advice. And it's biblical, right? The same thing goes with our walk with God. When's the last time that you really just had that awesome time with God? Where you're just so grateful that he's in your life and uh, that he, he loves you and you appreciate that love with him. I remember when I first started studying the Bible, man, I got that highlighter out, you know. Oh, that's a great passage. By the end of the year, my whole, the whole Bible was just one yellow page, you know, just highlighted. But I just love the scripture. I love praying. I love getting up early and staying up late. And I used to walk down to the uh, uh, railroad tracks at night and just walk down the railroad tracks and, and pray uh, it's just an amazing time. How about how about you? How is it going? Have you forsaken your first love? You know, the word forsaken doesn't mean you've drifted. It means you're just unfaithful. You you just decided something else is more important. You turn your back. You forsake God. And so, how can you tell? Well, when the singing starts, are you still talking in the back, or are you giving God your heart? Um, are you in awe of God? Uh, when the worship starts, uh, do you have your notebook out? Are you taking notes? Do you have your Bible? Are you ready to worship God? Uh, your quiet times, are you seeking God with all of your heart? My first challenge is decide this week that you're going to spend more time, more deep time in the word uh, and in prayer. Um, give it a number. I'm going to do one hour a day this week dedicated to my time with God. If you're already doing that, Dave, I'm already doing it. Two hours then. Uh, decide, decide to pray all night. Just you and God go somewhere just all night and uh, pray with God. Uh, renew your love for God. Okay, my second charge from the church in Smyrna. Uh, let's just read verse 10 here. It says, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. It's interesting. He's like, even if you die, I'm going to give you life. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Uh, he has the power to do that. Amen. But here's, here's the problem with this church. They were afraid. They were afraid. And if you look at what's happening in the United States, actually all around the world, this is what the biggest sin is happening, is fear. People are afraid. And um, the Bible says, do not be afraid more than it says to love one another. Amen. It is a, the biggest sin in the Bible. Why? Because if you are afraid, then you don't trust God. You don't trust the creator of the universe in your life. As if you were bigger than God. Here's how you can tell. <clears throat> he is testing you, it says here. He puts you in prison. 
to test you. Now, those aren't my words. That's right there. We have people that are isolating themselves because of COVID. They're, they're, you guys are in prison and you're afraid to get a shot. That could help you be unisolated, yeah. to be able to be together. This fear, I mean, if it's not uh, a conscience issue, if it's just because of fear, it'll take you down. And you've got to be brave to the point of death. Uh, you know, there's a, a brother uh, in Boston. His name is Daniel Lindros. Yeah. And just this week, uh, he was having a, a tummy ache. And so uh, he went to the doctor, they said it's nothing. So he went home and then it got worse. So he went back and they did some tests and they found a blockage in his intestines. Like we gotta, we gotta get that blockage out. And so they did some more tests and then they found her. And so if he wouldn't have got that tummy ache and found the blockage, they wouldn't have found the cancer. And, uh, and so, you know, the, uh, the leader of the church over there, Mike was trying to go visit him, but they wouldn't let him go in. And so he's texting him, are you okay? And, his response was, I'm prepared to die. That was his response. I'm prepared to die. I'm okay. And I'm like, wow. Like he was totally at peace. How about you? Are you at peace? Are you ready to die? I mean, that's what we signed up for, right? Amen. Willing to love God to the point of death. And that's what he says here. Be faithful even to the point of death. And then, of course, uh, they take the cancer out and he's totally fine. And so he, he posted on Facebook, you can look it up. He says, uh, I guess God has more work for me to do. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Just a faithful man willing to be brave to the point of death. Uh, and that's what I'm calling you guys to do, to be brave to the point of death. Uh, my third charge comes from the church in Pergamum. Read with me here in verse 14. It says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelite to sin so that they ate food, sacrificed to idols, and committed sexual immorality. And so here he's dealing with false doctrine. False doctrine. Um, it influenced the church to the point where people started uh, going away from the truth and started following other things that were being taught. And it led to immorality. And, uh, you know, isolation will do that to you. Uh, during COVID, there's more people. I mean, pornography has gone through the roof uh, since COVID started. Um, the amount of religion on YouTube is through the roof. Uh, you can sit there and listen, and it sounds good, uh, but it's mostly opinions. And that stuff can infiltrate into uh, our lives. And let me tell you, church, a lot of you, have so much wisdom but you isolate yourself and you keep that wisdom to yourself and yet your brothers and sisters who are listening to youtube all day uh, don't have access to you because you don't invite them to your house and sit down and show them the truth and help protect them and guide them through the truth wow. and what's happening is false doctrine gets into the minds of our youth uh, and when i say youth uh, I mean, new baby Christians. Come on. You guys are hungry for the word. You're hungry for the word. And yet no disciple is coming over to your house to be with you. So you're hungry and you turn on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you listen to stuff that you shouldn't be listening to because there's a lot of different stuff going in there. And you can start being influenced in the wrong way. And that's what was happening then. And it's no different now. It's going to happen now. You gotta, you've got to be willing to invite people over and help them prepare our brothers and sisters for this battle because satan does not want us to be victorious and he'll fill us full of stuff that's wrong and get us off the narrow road amen yeah. so practically when you are mentoring someone or discipling someone um if you're visiting we are considered the sold out discipling movement. Yeah. And so what does that mean? That means that every single member of our church has a spiritual mentor and we get together and uh, we go, okay, here's Jesus. Here's Dave. How can I be more like Jesus? And, and, and that's what we do. We try to grow and be more like Jesus. Um, and so here's what's happening though. You guys get together and, uh, well, I just wanted to hear them talk. 
uh, they need to be listened to. Yes, they need to be listened to, but then you open up the word of God. Amen. You got to open up the word of God because your opinions are not going to move their hearts. The word of God does. And you got to be prepared. You got to be in the word of God and help our brothers and sisters to be on the right path to help them. And you've got to pray together. Uh, so your times together need to be spiritually focused. Get into the word of God together and pray together. Amen, church? Amen. 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 Uh, my fourth charge comes from Thyatira. Um, verse 20. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual morality. And so here... The sin of the church is toleration of sin. And um, I just need to apologize to the church because uh, in my heart, I'm like, I don't want to lose anybody. I don't want anyone to go to uh, go away from God. And if I'm too hard, uh, you know, you, you might walk away from God and I start to um, tolerate sin. And if you're in sin, I've lost you already. You've already been lost. And so I want to apologize uh, from the bottom of my heart for my lack of concern. Um, and uh, even in my own life, I've tolerated sin. And I think because of COVID, uh, a lot of you have tolerated this different kinds of sin and so i want to talk about three different sins uh keep your finger here and go to revelation chapter um 21 revelation 21 we'll find the word victorious again in verse six he says uh he said to me it is done i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end to the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. And so here you have a list of sins. And I think the three that we, uh, starting with myself, tolerate are the cowardly, the unbelieving, and the idolaters. And so let's go through all three. Cowardly. So how do you know that you're being cow a coward? Well, you don't bring anyone to church. Uh, you're afraid to ask someone to study the Bible or to come to Bible talk. Uh, you cower. Uh, and so... It says here that if you're a coward, you're not going to make it to heaven. And as a leader, I know it, I see it, and then I don't say anything. And so I apologize. So from this point forward, uh, we are not going to tolerate that in our brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Uh, and so we don't want to be harsh. We want to be gentle and kind. And come walk with me. It was great. Uh, went with Alan to the mall. We're studying with the Bible, uh, the Bible uh, with Antonio, and and uh, and we're like, okay, we're going to teach Antonio how not to be a coward. And so we just started sharing our faith with people, and and so this is this is how you overcome. You walk with someone, you learn how to do it, and and believe me, after twenty plus years of doing it, I'm still uh, um, tempted to be a coward. Uh, when I go to the gym, I got to share with the biggest, baddest looking tattoo neck guy because uh, if i can if i can share with that guy then i overcome the the, the cowardice and then i can share with uh, other people and so we've got to make sure we don't tolerate that in our own lives and uh in our brothers and sisters because we've lost them they they're they're lost you can be part of a fellowship and be a coward and not make it to heaven because he is talking to the church but he's saying to the one who is victorious He's talking to the individual person throughout these uh, uh, charges that he gives to the churches. Um, okay, the second one, unbelieving. Okay, so how do you know if you're unbelieving? If you say stuff like this, 
Well, you don't know me. I'm different. I can't. Any of those right there make you unbelieving. If you say those things, then you're in sin. You don't believe that God created you awesome to do great things, that the scripture where it says you will do even greater things than me doesn't apply to you. That is unbelieving. And you, you can't tolerate that in your life and in your brothers' and sisters' lives. The last one is idolaters. And I know what you're thinking. I don't worship any other gods. What are you talking about? Well, go over to Philippians chapter 3. This is the one that hit me the hardest. And I repent before you in dust and ashes. Um, I'm going to go after this because I want to be victorious. Philippians chapter 3. Come on, babe. In verse 19, it's talking about people that are enemies of the cross. It says, their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Gluttony is a sin that will take you out. When you can't control yourself and you're eating too much, uh, you are in sin. You are in the sin of idolatry. Your stomach is now your God and controls you. Uh, and so um, there's an easy test you can take. Just get on the scale, look up BMI calculator, uh, and then uh, you put in your weight, your age, your height, and then it spits out a number. Um, 25 and below, 24.9 <laughs> and below is good. Um, I'm at 31.4, obese. This is what the calculator says. Therefore, my stomach is my God, and I am guilty of idolatry. And so I'm going to go after it. I remember when uh, Jill and I, uh, when we first got married, we went to a, a, a financial seminar to learn how to get out of debt. And we read the scripture in Romans 13. It says, let no debt remain outstanding except the debt of love for one another. Mm -hmm. And we were $60,000 in debt. Uh, I feel the same way about my weight. I am 50 pounds in debt. Mm -hmm. And uh, the moment we cut up our credit cards, I feel like we were fine. We repented. And so if, if I would have died right there, I, f I feel like I would have been fine. And so just because... Uh, I'm 50 pounds overweight, I can still be uh, at peace if I made a decision that I'm going to change. And so I'm calling you to make a decision. You know who you are. You know if you jumped on the scale and did this, that you would be guilty of gluttony. Now, I'm super proud of people like Mary, who's going after it. She's been going after it for several months. She's lost 30 pounds. Um, Howard just told me he lost how much? 12 pounds. Howard, Howard don't lose too much more. You need to eat some sandwiches. Uh, but you're looking good. But this is something that will take us out. It is biblical. This is, um, I'm not body shaming. I'm saying you need to understand this will keep you from heaven. Um, it is idolatry. It is um, something that will take you out. Gluttony will take you out. And so we got to make sure that we, um, we don't tolerate these sins in the church. Um, and I understand that COVID caused a lot of this. Isolation gets you uh, sitting around eating more and not going out. And so it's time to turn that around. Amen, church? Amen. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 3. My fifth charge from the church in Sardis. Verse 1, it says, To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who hold the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. 
And so here you have to understand there are parts of the church that are alive and create this reputation for the church. He said, but there are parts of you uh, that are about to die. And so, you know, we've grown since Jill and I have gotten here, we've grown from 42 to 63. Um, our contribution has gone up. The, uh, the singing has gotten better and better. And we can be super excited, uh, you know, on the sidelines. <laughs> you guys are doing great. Uh, but it's to the one who is victorious. And so you need to understand that you've got to wake up. Um, fellowship and scriptures bring faith. And so for those of you that uh, are waking up <laughs> uh, and are doing a great job, I'm super proud of you and keep going. But we've got to help our brothers and sisters wake up. Uh, we cannot allow them to die. Um, the fact that you came today means, uh, you know, <laughs> you're in a good spot. But if you're not actively in studies, if you're not actively bringing people to church, if you're not helping grow the body uh, like a regular body, you have active muscle tissue and then you have deteriorating muscle. And so you've got to be active in your faith or you will deteriorate. And so what does that mean? Well, it can't just be me waking people up. Uh, you know, when you wake someone up, they can be grumpy <laughs> and it can be scary. Uh, you know, uh, with, with Jill, I bring her some coffee. You know, <laughs> I leave it right there. <laughs> and, and the smell wakes her up. And I'm like, yes, amen. Um, it can be scary waking someone up. I have no problem waking someone up spiritually. I'll take the grumpiness. I'm okay. But you have to be okay with that too. You have to wake up your brothers and sisters. And so how do you do that practically? Well, Friday night, we had a singing devotional. And I shot out a text. I said, anyone who wants to go, hit me up. Uh, and the only one that hit me up was Sharon. And it was amazing. Uh, it was an amazing time. Um, am I right, Sharon? I heard stuff I had never heard before. Um, Chris Adams came and he preached this lesson on worshiping God. And oh my gosh, I chills, tears. I was blown away at what he was, what he was uh, teaching. And I thought, man, what a waste. We should have had this place filled. Uh, you know, we had uh, the baseball game coming up. We got to make sure that we help our brothers and sisters that are asleep and get them there. Uh, I was surprised uh, at the singing devotional, we had four or five baby Christians, not there, not there. And I go, man, that's my fault. I, I, should, have, I should have gone after that. They really missed out. Uh, and, and you should have that same heart too. Like we need to make sure we get people there to hear the word of God so they can increase their faith so they can uh, get out of the COVID funk. Um, uh, we we got to help each other. Uh, you know, when's the last time you invited someone over for dinner, your house uh, and cook for someone? Uh, I want to ask the church, beg you, please. We're baptizing. We have a lot of baby Christians Papa Swan, Mama Swan, need help. Have them come over. Have them build more relationships just than just with us. Yeah. You guys know what to do. You guys have been around since the 90s. You know, you know who you are. Invite people over. Share your home. Show, share your love. Let them see what it's like to have an awesome marriage, to have awesome children uh, that only God gives us. Amen? Okay. Um, Philadelphia, Revelation chapter 3. So most people uh, believe that this church was the only church out of the seven uh, that uh, were doing great. But uh, now Jesus was concerned. I'll show you where right here in verse 8. It says, I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Little strength. They were weak. Jesus was concerned for them. Uh, you know, back in the day, we used to have a list. All the leaders used to have a weak and concerned list. 
where we would pray for these people. Jesus is concerned for those who are weak. Uh, so one of the things that can create weakness in us besides isolation, I believe, is being a parent, for one. Uh, so go ahead and, and look over in Isaiah chapter 40. Come on. Yep. You'll know soon enough, bro. <laughs> Okay, in uh, Isaiah 40, verse 10, it says, See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. So first you have to understand God is all-powerful, right? He's, he's super powerful. In verse 11, it says, He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young." God loves you. If you are a parent and you have children, you've got to hope in God. You've got to understand that he is gentle with you and he loves you and he holds you close to his heart. In verse uh, 29, same chapter, it says he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. To be victorious when you're feeling weak, you got to hope in the Lord. Amen? Amen? If you're hoping in your job, if you're like, man, if I just made more money, then I would be stronger. Uh, well, maybe you can buy better food or whatever. Uh, but hoping in the Lord is going to make you victorious spiritually. Look at chapter 50. You want to hope in a relationship or hope in uh, uh, your career or in stuff. You want to hope in the Lord. Isaiah 50, verse 4. Here's the charge right here. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. And so when you get up and you spend time with God, um, I want you to focus on learning something that you can instruct. This is how you're going to grow in your strength. And so a lot of people, they read scripture to encourage themselves, you know, <laughs> There's a lot of great Psalms, a lot of encouragement in the scriptures, but pray that God teaches you something so you can have a well-instructed tongue, that you can meet someone and go, I just read something that's going to help you today, and you show it to them. This is going to increase your strength. It sustains the weary. It says, he wakens me morning by morning. You got to be committed to having times with God every morning, every morning. Make that commitment. Okay, let's go back to Revelation. So, I don't know how you're feeling right now, but when I was putting this together, I was like, man, I need, I need a lot of help. <laughs> I need a lot of help. Before I get to the last charge, I want to tell you an important ingredient in this uh, victorious life that God wants to give us. Look at Revelation chapter 1. In Revelation chapter 1, in verse 10, it says, On the Lord's day, so when's the Lord's day? Every day, that's right. Every day is the Lord's day. Every day. Verse 10, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. In order for you to live a victorious life, you got to live in the spirit. You got to connect your mind. You got to connect your heart. You got to connect your strength, your soul to the spirit. He's the one that's going to guide you into victory. Look at uh, chapter four. Verse 1, it says, after this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I heard, uh, uh, the, I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here, and I will show you 
what must take place after this. At once, I was in the spirit. See, Jesus is calling each of us to be victorious. And he's like, come, be victorious with me. And you got to be in the spirit to be able to hear him, to be able to acknowledge what he's asking you to do, to believe and have faith that you can be victorious. He wants to give you victory. Look what he says here uh, uh, in verse 6. B. <laughs> in the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. <laughs> Day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The four uh, living creatures represent all of uh, all the living creatures. So the lion represents the wild beast, the ox represents the tame animals, the man represents humanity, the birds represent all the flying creatures. And so you have all living creatures bowing down and worshiping God and singing to God. Is that amazing? We are not to worship things created, the created worships the creator. Amen? Amen. It says here in verse 9, Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. We have to take our awe of God, our, our worship of God to a different level. We are not here to check off a box. We are here to understand how to worship God, to make changes in our life, because every day is the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the seventh and final charge. Chapter three, verse 14. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, these are the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I'm rich, I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich. And white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and solve to put on your eyes so you can see. Lukewarmness. Lukewarmness. You know, uh, it's so amazing to study the Bible with people that come to visit us. And they're like, man, I've never seen a church like that. Everyone is singing. Everyone's fired up. Uh, our church isn't like that. Well, what's it like? Oh, it's lukewarm. And they can say it so easily. They can say it so easily. It's lukewarm. And we can judge those other churches, rightfully so, because it's in the Bible. We can judge them. We can go, oh, that's a lukewarm church. I don't want to go to that church. But how about you? Are you a lukewarm Christian? It says here that Jesus is going to spit you out. You cannot tolerate lukewarmness in your life. You've got to be hot for the Lord. Nothing else should be more important then serving God, worshiping God, putting him in the eye of honest in your minds. Do you have awe of God? Do you fear God at all? When you have those thoughts, when you look at those things on your phone, do you fear God? When you say things and look down on other people, when you don't believe in yourself, you have no fear of God. He has created you to be wonderful and to, to worship him uh, with zeal and passion in your life. Amen. What's it going to take? Well, you've got to renew your first love. You've got to renew your first love. You've got to be brave. You've got to stop hanging out with people that just want to hang out. You've got to use the scriptures and pray together. Be spiritual with one another. You've got to not tolerate cowardice and unbelieving and idolatry 
in your heart and in your minds and in the lives of the brothers and sisters around you. You've got to wake up, get into the word of God that sustains you and it's going to give you strength. If you're feeling weak, spend more time in the Bible. That's what he's saying. If you're tired, what's the answer? Get up earlier. <laughs> Stay up later and get into the word of God so you can be victorious on that day. Let's read here and close out in Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. Jesus says, To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Listen, yes, our church has grown. Uh, the churches worldwide have grown. Even since the pandemic started, we've started 22 new churches. The Holy Spirit is not going to be stopped. It's going to continue to grow. But how about you? The one that is victorious, God is going to do amazing things in your life. Start believing that God can do great things through you. And let's be victorious together. Amen.